One was titled Five Weird Signs of an Inexperienced Self-Taught Programmer, and the other was Five Weird Signs of a Mediocre Self-Taught Programmer. We're going to see what he has to say, and I'm going to share my perspective. His first point is that they choose the same tech stack. Self-taught people have a habit of choosing the same tech stack. They are not prepared to step out of their comfort zone. They don't want to learn anything new. If a manager asks them to learn a different language, they try to convince their managers and team why X language they know will be better for that project. I really don't see how that ties specifically to a self-taught engineer. There are programmers who just want to focus on one programming language that is their comfort zone and then there's others who are more flexible and willing to work across technology stacks i think it's only natural that people are going to be inclined to work with the languages and the tech stacks that they know when starting a new project whenever possible but generally speaking good software engineers will be flexible and willing to use the right tool for the right job he goes on to say that they are not prepared to get comfortable with the uncomfortable as a developer, you can never grow in the industry if you can't get out of your comfort zone. I agree with the main point of it being important that you get out of your comfort zone, but that doesn't really have anything to do with whether you're self-taught or whether you've got a computer science degree. Number two, they have the attitude of just making it work. Inexperienced self-taught programmers don't care about code quality. They don't focus on their own code style. They just want to build the desired feature in the app. Honestly, I think most people when they're just starting out really don't care it's not that they don't care about code quality they just don't know about code quality because that's something that comes with experience and as you learn from your mistakes and how to improve things i don't think that's really a self-taught versus like a computer science thing i do think that if you go through a computer science program there's a lot higher probability that during your coursework that there are going to be discussions on having good code and you might learn about some of the things that make a good code but until you're actually in the trenches writing code that's really where you're going to be learning it. And I know people from both sides, self-taught and those who have computer science degrees who don't care as much about like the code quality. And at the same time, there's those on both sides that are just amazing and really focused on it. So it's very much an individual thing, not necessarily tied to whether you're self-taught or not. They don't understand that sometimes when programmers try to write high quality code, deadlines can't be met. Deadlines have to be pushed in those situations. I don't know, it seems kind of a stretch for the point that he was making here. Number three, they write duplicate code. No developer wants to maintain a project whose code is not well written. If Cobius contains code that has been posted thousands of times, it becomes difficult to manage. And this is really true. Like if you are writing code and you're just taking copies of something you did and just stamping it all over the place through the code base, it does become difficult to manage because if you need to make a change to one of those like components, you also have to go make that change everywhere else and hope that you catch everything so you don't end up with inconsistencies across the application. Inexperienced self-taught developers duplicate code a lot. They believe that if the software works properly, there is no need to remove duplicate code. I think the key word here is inexperienced, not that it's self-taught developers, because that is something that everyone tends to go through. A lot of people when they're starting out will take something they've done and tend to stamp things out. And it's like this phase that you go through, you start off doing that. And then all of a sudden you start learning about the principles of having dry code and trying to prevent that. And then you actually can swing to the other extreme where you're so focused on having reusable code that you start making these behemoth reusable components that can do everything. And then they can become really hard to manage and you might even be adding features to those components that just aren't even going to be used. And then eventually you kind of try to find this happy balance between, you know, writing dry code and not doing something called over optimization. They forget that by copying and pasting the same code they're making the code base bulky, they tell you that all these extra codes will only take a few seconds to execute. Honestly, I haven't heard many people actually say that in real life. I mean, yes, the more you stamp out code, and the more lines of code, the larger your code base. That's pretty obvious. Number four, they don't do any unit testing. Inexperienced self-taught programmers have a false belief that no test case could break their code. They check their code just by making code calls along with some manual testing. This is just a very broad generalization. Again, nothing to do with whether you're self-taught or not, you know, whether you end up liking unit testing or not. Now, if you're using like Odin project or free code camp and stuff, they have modules on actually testing so you can learn to test. 
this really does come down to the individual and how much time you want to put into learning how to do the different kinds of testing. You also have to remember that there are a lot of opinions out there, strong opinions on both sides from less testing to more testing, and there's valid reasons for that. Here he says that after talking to programmers, I can tell you wherever possible, take test-driven development approach. It is the only thing after which you can trust your code. Well, that's simply not true because there's like tons of applications out there that are built that use testing, but don't use test-driven development. If you're not familiar with you doing the test-driven development, that's where you write your test first, and then you write the rest of your code until that test, all those test cases actually pass. Whether that's the end all be all of how you should approach things is highly debatable. There are gonna be lots of times where you're building things and you might not even know exactly how everything is going to turn out, what all of the possible edge cases are. And if you only have a narrow set of edge cases defined and you write tests for those and you pass it, you think, oh, I'm done. Well, that could be a problem because you haven't handled anything. Now, you could also miss edge cases when you write your unit tests afterwards, but there are definitely times, and I've worked on projects where it simply just doesn't even make sense to do test-driven development because things are so agile and so on the fly and you don't even know what you're working with until you get it. That said, I do believe that doing unit tests are important and there is the balance, and I tend to be more in the middle on this where 100% code coverage can be very extreme and oftentimes just adds a lot of boilerplate that you start seeing people use tactics just to get that coverage when those tests aren't actually providing any value. Number five, they run after the most hyped technology. This is the most fun. I find a self-taught man running after the most hyped technology. I consider him inexperienced. So if you're interested in anything that is coming out new, then you must be an inexperienced software engineer and you can call me a little biased well the dude is biased i found that inexperienced programmers are the ones who talk about the next big thing each and every one of them wants to work with the latest technologies what about those people who are passionate i know tons of software engineers who like to stay up on the latest technology so that they know the best tools to use in the future for future projects does that mean they're inexperienced just because they're passionate about learning about software technologies and frameworks and libraries that are coming out? Or what about those who are trying to stay up on what is highly in demand in the industry and where things are changing so that they can position themselves to be in demand when it comes to new jobs so that they can grow how much they make as a software engineer as quickly as possible. A little bit further down, I've noticed that these inexperienced self-taught programmers have gone through a video tutorial on the latest technology. After watching the video, they start to consider themselves experts in that field. I don't know a lot of you who've been telling me that just because you just got started and you're starting to learn a new framework and get your foot in the door with programming, that you're an expert in the field. That doesn't seem to be the case. I know I didn't feel that way when I was starting out and I started feeling comfortable with AngularJS. I didn't feel like I was an expert. Shoot, in some areas, I still don't feel like I'm an expert. All right, so five weird signs of a mediocre self-taught programmer. Number one. They write clever code. Clever code is good for showing off your skills, but clever code is highly unreadable. The tricks you've learned while learning to code don't work professionally. Mediocre self-taught developers think they could impress the reviewer with their cool tricks. What he's talking about here with clever code is that you have kind of the fundamentals of a programming language and how to do things, but you could get into some kind of creative ways to do things, maybe an unusual way of doing something with like bitwise operators that you just don't see being used very often. And those kind of things could be called clever code because it could really shrink down the amount of code that you need to do something, but at the expense of being readable and understandable. And if it's something that's unusual that works, but that just a lot of people don't know what's happening, then it can cause more problems with someone's trying to debug and figure out what is going on. And a lot of times we try to favor having something that is understandable readable over being so over optimized and clever as he put it and i agree that we should all avoid clever code but i don't think that that is something that is just specific to self-taught software engineers i've seen plenty of people with computer science degrees do that and i think this is also one of those situations where you go through phases as you get more comfortable you start thinking oh this is cool i discovered something new i'm gonna try it out and then you find out that the person doing the code review is like what what is even going on here you go to explain it and they're like yeah maybe write it somewhere else so i think this is something that 
we tend to fall into more as a new programmer, not so much just as a self-taught programmer. And I'm totally guilty of having made that mistake myself. Number two, they keep repeating themselves. After going through the code of many self-taught, I can say that they have a habit of repeating the code. Okay, this is, looks like one of the points on like the previous article and stuff where he's talking about not stamping things out and you know having dry code. So we aren't going to like repeat that. Number three, they don't stick to fixed code style. I think he meant fixed. Mediocre developers don't care about code style. So it is interesting here. Something I am noticing is that compared to the last article, even though the title has self-taught, you know, programmer like scattered all over the place, in this one he uses that in the title, but then there's more of like the mediocre developers don't care about code style. He's targeting self-taught in the title, but not as heavily in the article itself. He's saying that they don't stick to a code style. And what he's talking about here is that for a lot of companies or projects, you have kind of a predetermined way to do things to maintain consistency across the code base. So if someone goes into work on like one file, they kind of know what's going on and how things are structured. And there's some like basic patterns to follow, which can be good at making the code base more readable and helps with like onboarding new software developers. It says a large code base that has multiple developers working on it should appear to have been written by a single developer. So that's a very cool and ambitious goal, but the fact that we're all different, that simply is not going to actually ever happen. The code will look like it was written by one person, unless it's a super small application with very little complexity to it. You can have a lot of consistency, but there are always gonna be differences just in how we kind of choose to you know, pick our names and, and things like that. Believing that you can actually have a really large code base that was contributed to by lots of people and that it will look like it's all written by the same person just is not likely to happen. And frankly, this has nothing to do with whether you're self-taught or not. This comes down to you are presented with a style guide and are you the type of person that likes to conform to a certain style guide or are you not? I know plenty of like experienced people who disagree with some of the more stringent style guides out there and there's others who love it. Number four, they overcomplicate simple things. A powerful principle in software and development is called KISS and it's not just software development, it's in a lot of domains. KISS stands for keep it simple stupid. A mediocre developer never tries to simplify things. The code written by them contains sections, contain complex algorithms for simple problems. And this is one of those things that whether you're self-taught or whether you come from a computer science program is that you aren't going to know how to do simple solutions to complex problems until you actually encounter them. You work through them, you look back and learn and find new ways to do that. Now, someone who comes from like a computer science background, they will have taken classes on algorithms, so they're gonna know a lot more of like the common algorithm. So, you know, they definitely could in that situation be able to pick up that kind of stuff a lot faster than someone who's self-taught, but by no means is that only available to people who are self-taught. There are a lot of self-taught programmers who spend a lot of time learning about data structures and algorithms and reading books on clean code. One of the things that a lot of people who are starting out who are self-taught, you know, may not be super familiar with is time complexity and understanding how to have performant code. And that's something that they could use, definitely pick up over time. But this is not just, you know, limited to self-taught software engineers. I know plenty of people who have computer science degrees who can overcomplicate it, plenty with who are self-taught who can overcomplicate things. And there's been plenty of times where I've overcomplicated things. Number five, they hate to teach. Whoa, rockstar developers are great teachers. Not true. So rockstar developers, you know, may be amazing at writing like the best code in the world. That is no guarantee that they are good at teaching. In fact, you know, a lot of people joke that, you know, those who can't do end up teaching. So here it's saying a mediocre self-taught don't want to explain anything to other developers. They don't want to, or is that just like a personality type thing? This has nothing to do with whether you're self-taught or not. How good you are at teaching really does come down to the individual. Some people are more you know, apt to be able to explain things well, or they enjoy communicating with other people and, and teaching to other people. And then there are other people who tend to be more quiet and they could be super brilliant 
at figuring things out that hardly anyone can, but and they might be the person who is just sitting in the corner quietly, listening to everything, absorbing everything, and coming up with solutions to the problems, but they might really struggle with communicating. A lot of programmers struggle with communicating. That has nothing to do with whether you like to teach people or not, or whether you're a great teacher or not. A good developer is always ready to go back to the whiteboard. They're ready to explore their own thought process. They never run away from giving an explanation on a subject. Actually, I think it would be wrong to never run away from giving an explanation on a subject. Sometimes you don't have a good explanation to give and a smart programmer isn't going to just step up and pretend to know things that they don't and ramble on and mislead and just you know put themselves out there. They're gonna hold back and defer to someone else that they know actually has experience in that topic. I would actually be more cautious if I didn't know someone and they had an answer to everything. I would wanna double check that they actually knew what they're talking about because I have encountered people who have answers to everything and can talk very convincingly and they just don't know what they're talking about in some cases. It seems that very little of what this guy has said is actually tied to whether you're self-taught or not and has more to do with where you are in your progression. Are you new with less experience and you know compared to someone who is more experienced? you'll learn and you'll progress. And a lot of these things you'll pick up as you have more experience. I think there's a value in knowing these topics so that you can try to incorporate that in the stuff you're learning and studying. And as you try to become a better software engineer, but frankly, I've seen people on both sides of this who are weak in these areas, take it as a grain of salt. The fact that the articles target specifically self-taught programmers because if you use this criteria to try to figure out if someone is self-taught or not you're probably going to be wrong more times than not thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one late